Listen, God wants you well more than you want to be well. He wants you to prosper and be in health. Come on. Even as your soul prospers. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will get sicker. Is that what it said? We're going to lay hands on the sick and what? They will recover. They will recover. Amen. Praise God. This is the power of the Word of God. Healings are going to start to happen and manifest. They're happening today at Healing School. Are you expecting? Is anybody expecting? Well, good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Healing School up here at Karis Bible College in Woodland Park, Colorado. How many of you are happy to be here today? All right. Thank you guys for joining us online. We absolutely are so blessed that you are able to be able to be with us even though you're not here. I'm Katrina Amstutz Washburn, and this is my hubby, Michael Amstutz Washburn. And my daddy, Daniel, is on a much needed and well-deserved vacay. So he's just resting. How many of you know that rest is important? Amen? Amen. So why don't you guys hop on your feet? Let's worship God with our singing and our praise. <laughs> no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Say it with me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen.
know that when things are kind of shaky and never seems to be going right, that you have to choose to praise. It doesn't just come naturally. Your flesh wants to react and um, throw its little feelings around, right? On what is really going on. And it's okay, but for us not to be led by them and to actually choose to praise, to actually choose to count it all joy, even when it isn't. It's a hard thing, am I wrong? Right, it's a hard thing, right? And when you're in the midst of all that lovely, lovely um, challenges and disasters and whatever, right, Miss Tracy? You choose to count it all joy. Everybody say, count it all joy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, hell, the Lord. 
All hail King Jesus. His name is above every other name. Every other name. The name of Jesus. High above all other names. You know, it's hard. It's hard sometimes, isn't it? When the, when the symptoms are roaring louder than what seems to be just a name. Sure, like when you have a back ache, like when you throw your back out. Or like you stub your toe. Or to kids, that's a big deal, right? Or every breath inside you is doing everything it can to come out. Or maybe there's a pain inside your chest right here and it's screaming so loud that you feel like you can't even remember the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God inside you is so real. And when you can't think of anything else to say, it's still the Spirit of God. It's still Jesus' Spirit. And when you can walk in the Spirit of God and pray in tongues, even if you don't think you're being all that holy and you think that that pain is overtaking, the Spirit of God prays perfect prayers. How many of you can pray perfect prayers? I know I can. But I know that the Spirit in me can. And when you're lying in that bed or you're sitting on the floor or you're in your car um, and whatever tries to hit you, because this is a natural world, right? And things come our way. And just as the devil can use it, so can God. I want you to hear what I just said. So this is a natural world and natural things happen. And just as the enemy tries to use it, so can God. And when you're laying there, start praying in tongues. It's not gonna make sense to you. And even if you don't feel like you're being the holiest of holies. Um, funny story, when I was a kid, I didn't really understand the whole you know, praying in tongues thing. And so I would actually sit and I remembered my dad would be driving and <laughs> I would say pizza toppings. And I'd be like, ah, pepperoni, 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 pepperoni. But you know what? I'm sorry, but even God can use that because it's the heart behind it, amen? And after a while, it sounds like this. Come on. Come on, do it with me. Those of you who are watching, sometimes you need to get out of your own head. No, sometimes you have to put religion aside. You have to put expectations aside. Others' expectations on you or what you think and how you think it should be. You know, tongues is, Paul says that his mind is unfruitful, but his spirit is speaking perfect prayers. Do you guys feel like you just like did a major workout after doing that with me? Come on, do you feel like you just did a major workout? Do you see how that works? Because the Holy Spirit is your encourager. And when you're down and out, it's the last thing that you wanna do. But here's what's cool is sometimes you don't wanna speak your original language. And so you just jump into that. And after a while, you feel like you can crush the head of the enemy. You feel like you can jump up and you can run. Those feelings line up with the word of God. And after a while, all of a sudden, before that started happening, you were like, okay, so wait, what was wrong with me? And you don't remember anymore. So just, I really, I really sense that somebody's needing to hear that right now. Probably a lot of us, honestly. You cannot be a believer. I'm gonna make a bold statement, but you cannot be a believer 
and not walk in the Spirit of God. Because I have news for you, the Spirit of God is what makes you a believer. The Holy Spirit, when you confess with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, who do you think came inside you? It's not a little like Fisher Price toy like what you thought with a little baby Jesus, right? You already got it. All right, thank you, Jesus. A fight is with weapons unseen. Sounds like the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Your enemies crash to their knees. So we rise up in worship. When trials unleash like a flood. The battle belongs to our God So we cry out in worship The victory is yours You're riding on the sword Your name is unfair Your name is unshaken. Even to break me has failed. Now nothing will silence my praise. I will cry out in worship.
government, any country, any stress, any anxiety, any doubt, hate that stuff. Thank you, Jesus. In the darkest day in history, you took it all. And someday maybe we'll realize that you actually took it all. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Worthy is 
Every second of every day, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month, every year, I thank you. Even when things aren't going the way that I think they should, you know better. <laughs> No weapon formed against me will ever prosper. And he has not given me a spirit of fear, but of what? Of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You know, Zai Zai, my little guy, Zion Judah, what a big name to live up to. God knew what he was doing with that boy. Every, every night we go through scriptures, three of those included. And at two years old, he knows eight scripture verses. And all I have to do is go, no weapon. And he goes, no weapon formed against Zion shall prosper. Huh? Yeah. And if a two-year-old can get it in his heart, so can we, right? So say to yourself today, all day long, no weapon formed against me will ever prosper because I am the son or daughter of the King of Kings and the Most High God who has already trampled over all things in the darkness of this world, amen? Okay, let me see your smiling faces. Ah, I wanna see your smiling faces, I'm gonna imagine it. All right, today we have the fabulous Miss Sharon Rich. That's my girl, we love her. So you guys say hello to each other. And as my dad always says, this is like the crazy neighbor thing, but run over to your neighbors and knock on their door and invite them over and come watch this with you. All right, we love you guys. Thank you for singing with us. It's always a pleasure. It's a joy. And we will be right back after this video. Welcome to AWM Now, a small glimpse at how the partners of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College are bringing God's healing power to people around the world, people like Sylvester from India. When a freak football accident in high school left him with a severe spinal injury, Sylvester spent years restricted to a walker and a misunderstanding that his pain came from God. 
a belief that crippled both his body and his mind. Then one day, a friend invited him to attend Karis Bible College, where years of wrong theology would be transformed under the Word. Sylvester never heard Andrew before, and it was a complete new place for him. All this time in his family, he was taught that God is the one who puts sickness and punishes us. The teaching of spirit, soul and body changed his view of God and himself. He understood that God is a good God and he will never make his children suffer. As he renewed his mind to the truths of God's word, healing began to take place in his body. By graduation day, Sylvester walked across the stage pain-free and without a walker. Wanting to dedicate his life as a living sacrifice, Sylvester began translating our Karis curriculum into the Tamil language, imparting the gospel to a whole new demographic that includes 69 million people in India. Most Christians, most believers, Today, Sylvester is leading a team of people who are breaking religious strongholds through the translation of the gospel, taking it further than it's ever gone before. He shall know the truth. The truth shall set him free. The truth which I learned in Karis Bible College has set me free. I really want to thank Brother Andrew Momak and his entire team for the truth which I learned in Karis Bible College. And I really want to thank CBC India for making this possible. Thank you. Thank you, friends and partners, for providing a place where people like Sylvester can not only receive healing for themselves, but also be equipped to bring this same message to others. To see more inspiring stories from our locations around the world, check out our global updates by clicking on the link below. Amen. Welcome to Healing School. Is everybody excited to be here? Can you tell I'm excited to be here? I'm excited to be here. You know why? Because my sister is going to bring the word this, morning, this afternoon, so I'm excited about that. But I'm mainly excited about Jesus, the Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, the Jehovah Jireh, the provider. Anybody know who I'm talking about? Amen. Well, welcome to Healing School. We are so glad that you have joined us this afternoon. Those of you that are on campus, how many, this is your first time coming to healing school? Hallelujah. We got a lot of hands raised. Well, welcome. We're so glad that you can join us today. Those of you that are watching us online, we know that you could have been doing so many other things, but we are glad that you are tuning in to watch us today. You can watch us on YouTube. You can watch us on Facebook Live. Karis, I think it's also... Um, Karis Bible College, we actually have a YouTube, uh, um, not a YouTube, a Facebook page, and you can watch us there. But you know what? Your best watching experience is if you watch us on gospeltruth.tv. Anybody know about gospeltruth.tv? What? Good. That's good. Because if you don't, I'm telling you, something that you can turn on and you could just leave on with not all of the commercials telling you about this drug and that drug that you can take. We're just going to tell you about the gospel. That's all we're going to tell you about on there. So I encourage you to watch that. And it's 24-7. You could just constantly watch it. At the end of our service today, we're going to have our prayer ministers. They're going to be standing up here. And we are going to just welcome you to come forward for prayer. They will agree with you. So if you want to do that, those of you that are watching online, please, you can call us at 719-635-1111. Again, 719-635-1111. We actually have prayer ministers 24-7. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So last week, we just had our summer family Bible conference, which was amazing. We had, we had the kids here and everything. We had bouncy houses. And you know what? We even had, I heard that we had um, Mr. Andrew Walmack himself sitting in a dunk tank. I don't know who, if they dunked him or not, but he was sitting in a dunk tank. We always have a fun time with that. But guess what is happening next month? Next month, we have Healing is Here. So if you enjoy, if you enjoy coming to Healing School, Healing is Here is Healing School on steroids. So I encourage you, it will be live streamed. It is going to be from August the 9th through the 12th. So if you can't get to Colorado, you can watch us 
All of the sessions will be um, live streamed, just not the workshops. And we're going to have a, a big array of speakers. It's a lot of them. So I encourage you to go to awmi.net slash events, and you can see all of the listings for that. Also, in September, we will be having Truth and Liberty Coalition Conference, and that is going to be September the 8th through the 10th. So it's a lot going on here. But you know what we, I want to do right now? It's what we call testimony time. So I wanted to share some testimonies because these testimonies, I mean, when I was reading these off, I was like, am I going to read all of these? I'm going to paraphrase as much as I can, but it's better when you hear from the people of what happened to them. So this is from Bianca. Bianca, she wrote in on... July the 11th, and she said, you know, when I say call the prayer line, there's a reason I'm saying that. You don't have to have somebody lay hands on you. Well, Bianca called the prayer line, and she said uh, the prayer minister's name was Shane, and Shane agreed with her that her husband would be cleared of an inf a bad infection that he had. She said he had been in bed for a couple of days, feeling horrible, and had not been at work. She said the next day, somebody say the next day? The next day, he woke up and he felt much better, went to work and has been getting better and better each day, going to work each and every day. And she said each and every day he's been feeling better and he is just about fully recovered. She said, thank you, Jesus, that you agreed with me. And that was just, she called the prayer line. So I encourage you, let's give Bianca and her husband some praise, <laughs> clap an offering for that because we're just excited about it. This one, this one kind of made me laugh. This was uh, yesterday. This is from Heather, and Heather was, uh, she was writing in from Missouri. She said she called the prayer line also, and she was calling about her pastor that was turning 70 soon, and she said that they had to rush the pastor to the hospital in the emergency room having gallbladder surgery, and she said she went in, went in sick and came out looking like she was 50. I don't know how that happens, but she said... <laughs> She said that the elders of the church had been listening to Andrew and watching him. You've already got it. And she said that they knew it was already done. And she just wanted to say thank you to the prayer ministers that when she called in, that they were praying for her pastor. These are the last two, but they really, really touched my heart. Because, you know, sometimes we think that the only thing that we need to be healed of is we need to be healed of something physical, something on the outside or something on the inside, but I want you to listen to the, these testimonies. This one, it is from Victoria, and she said that, I'm married for 14 years and I have been struggling to conceive without success. My husband had been a little, my husband and I had a little discussion over an issue and it resulted in them deciding to get divorced. And this was um, back in January. So, well, she said back in January, he has been sleeping on the couch. January, we're in July now. So she said that um, I was so stressed out and so depressed. She said, but I decided that I'm going to Andrew's conference in Virginia. How many of you know Jesus is everywhere, right? So she went to the conference in Virginia. That was back in May of this year. And she said she went up front to a prayer minister. And the prayer minister prayed with her. She explained everything that was happening. They agreed in prayer. And she was led by the Holy Spirit, spoke a word of faith over her, and canceled the divorce. She canceled it in the spirit room, and they prayed a prayer of faith. She prayed a prayer of faith over her. She returned to New York. Shortly after that, her marriage was restored. That's a healing. Because how many of you know the enemy wants to destroy marriages? How, do you know that? All the stuff that's happening, he wants to destroy marriages. He wants to destroy the family. So God cares about that. So I'm telling you, you know, even as I was reading this testimony today and I was thinking about it, anybody, if you need agreement for your marriage, we have prayer ministers up here. You can also, like I said, call 719-635-1111 and email us at healingschool at awmi.net because I want to hear about testimonies like this rather than somebody is getting a divorce or something, all the bad stuff. There's some good stuff happening in the kingdom of God, amen? And that's the stuff we want to, I want to hear about. My last testimony is from Trevor, and he says that I started watching Andrew when I was in prison. I was in prison back in May 
26, in uh, 2019, he was sentenced to five years, one to five years, but he ended up only serving two and a half years. He was in prison because it was his fourth DUI. He said that he was a mess in 2015. He said he was drinking every day, he was doing drugs, he crashed his motorcycle, he died, okay? He died, but he was revived. So he was brought back to life, and he said that he believes that that whole experience of him being there in prison, that God used that, didn't cause it, but he used it to save his life. He says, since then, Since May 23rd of 2021, I have been clean for three and a half years. I go to church every weekend. I do a Bible study on Wednesdays. I have a wonderful fiance. Her and I got baptized. We we went back to church. We got baptized the week of Easter. And he said that, um, okay, so they got baptized in the church. And he was just telling me the name of the church. He said, now I am 43 years old and I am born again. So you know what? There is nothing that is taking place in your life. He went to prison. God didn't cause it. Consequences caused that, but he used it. God can turn a situation around for your good. So even if you're watching online, even if you're watching and you're watching from prison, there's nothing too hard for God. What is impossible for him? There is nothing impossible for God. I encourage you. Call the phone line. Come up here and have somebody agree with you in prayer. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to link shields as the body of Christ, brothers and sisters in the Lord. And that's what I want to encourage you to do today. And at this time, I'm going to give away some presents because I like giving stuff away. So what I need is my two of my leads are going to come up here. We're going to have Remy. We're going to have um, Tim. If I can have Ron as well. So, Remy, if you can take these, this right here, and you could just give one. Where are my first-time guests? This is your first time here at Healing School. So what we have here is we have the, I think it's the 2018 Healing is Here conference when we had Todd White, and um, it was an amazing time. So we're going to give those away. And then my brother Ron, he's going to give away these because how many of you know God wants you well? God wants you well. So if you want a God wants you well tape and your first-time guest here, If you want one of the DVDs, one is a DVD, one is a CD, because we want you to be blessed. And if you've already heard it and listened to it, how about not, we just give it away. Give it away to somebody else, a family member or something like that. Another thing I wanted to give away is I wanted to give away this USB. It is by none other than Miss Audrey Mack, and it is entitled Healing. You don't have to be sick another day in your life. You don't have to be sick as a dog. How about that? How many of you, who doesn't want to be sick? You don't have to be sick as a dog because we already know that Jesus already took it all on the cross. And when I saw this one, this is by a gentleman. He actually comes and he teaches at healing school. His name is Alex McFarlane. And it says, Stan, unleashing the wisdom of God. Anybody need to have the wisdom of God? Amen. And my last giveaway is going to be by my sister, This, I was reading this, I was like, this is amazing. So the the title of it is Unity, the Place of the Commanded Blessing. The compelling call of unity is heard through this book in the lives of the early church, David, Moses, and Joshua. The revelation therein gives a glimpse of how we, the body of Christ, are one body and how our combined efforts will give access to the place of the commanded blessing blessing. Amen. This is written by Miss Sharon Rich. I'm sure if you are nice to her, she'll even sign it for you. I'm sure that she will. And at this time, guess what it is? No, we just did testimonies. You want to hear another one? Well, the the testimony we're going to give right now, we're going to give. How about we do that? Because you know what, there's a testimony in giving. Because sometimes we think, I have a testimony for you. There is a student, and she said to me that she knew that she needed to, and at this time I'm going to have my, off, my ushers, they're going to pass out the offering envelope. And this student, she came to me and she said, you know, God had told me I was having um, some issues with paying my tuition. And she said, God told me, she said, God had put on my heart that I needed to 
to give. She needed to sow a seed for somebody. It was another student, but she didn't really know who the student was. But she said that the Lord told her to go and stand in a particular place. I think it might have been by the student help desk or something. So she did that. And she said, she's like, how in the world am I going to give to this person when I really don't have the money? And she said that when she went there, it was somebody that was in line and she saw him and they had a conversation. And she said, all that she had, guess this, all that she had was exactly what he needed. So she sowed a seed, and then not only that, she sowed the seed, and then she got blessed. After that, and a whole nother, it happened, I think, a week or two after that, that she got blessed financially with having her tuition paid. So you know what? It wasn't, she was looking at, you know what, God, I really don't have enough to do this. But you know what it was? It was her obedience. How many of you know your job is not your source? Does anybody know that? I know that. And yes, I work for Andrew Womack Ministries. <laughs> But this is not my source. Jesus is my source. And that, that young lady, because it was a young lady, that young lady, what she did was she was like, I trust you, God. You are my source. And in her obedience of stepping out and doing what God did, she was blessed all the more for doing that. Amen. We don't even need a scripture. We just got that testimony. Amen. Thank you, Jim, for assisting me. I appreciate that. Does everybody have their offering envelopes? If you are writing a check, please make it out to Karis Bible College or CBC. Please, if, and there's also a place on that envelope for you to write out any information for credit card information. Please write clearly. We would appreciate that. If you are giving online today, we want you to be a part of this. You can go to awmi.net forward slash healing. That is going to take you to our Healing Center page. In the center of the page, you can actually watch us live. You'll see that there. And you are also looking at our brand new Caris website. So there, right below that screen, you click the orange donate button. Once you click that button, it will take you to our student um, page where you can prayerfully consider partnering up with us here at Healing School. There's an opportunity for you to give there um, in different amounts, 25, 50, 100, 1,000, Whatever it is that you have in your bank account, you can give that amount. We just want you to prayerfully consider that. If you would like to text to give, you can do that as well. You can text the word GIVE to 844-887-0796. Again, text the word GIVE to 844-887-0796. Does everybody have their offering in their hand? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to give and to sow into your kingdom, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we are doing our part to get the word out as deep and far as we can with um, this ministry, oh God. We thank you that we're sowing into good ground. And we thank you as we give today, oh God. We know, Lord God, we're not giving to get but we're giving, Lord God, to be a blessing to someone else that may be standing in need, that may need to know that you love them and you love them with such an unconditional love. And we say thank you for this opportunity for us to give today. In Jesus' name, amen. We can receive the offering. And at this time, it is my honor and my pleasure. Let me, because I don't, I don't even want her to just come up here. I want to read what I have for her, that... Sharon Rich is a minister of the gospel, an award-winning author, a strategic business and financial thought leader. She, as the former CFO of Andrew Womack Ministries and Caris Bible College, she is married to Lamont Rich, who is my brother right over here, and they've been married for since 1988. And they have served for over 30 years in ministry with their children. And Sharon has a heart to see unity in the body of Christ and lives changed by the power of God. I present to some and introduce to others none other than my sister, Sharon Rich. Thank you. Bless you. Let's give Tracy a hand. I know all over this room, we appreciate her and the gift of God in her. Hallelujah. We bless you and we strengthen you. Amen. Such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. So good to see all your beautiful faces. 
I'm so grateful to have my husband with me. And as Tracy mentioned, we've been married now for 34 years, since 1988. And uh, I'm so grateful he put up with me. <laughs> I do what I can. I'm very grateful for all that God has done. Grateful for my husband and his ministry. Grateful for his obedience to the Lord. Grateful for all that he's done to provide for me and my children. And uh, I'll say like my dad used to say, he said, when you see some ladies, he said, that's just a package walking. He said, that's an expensive package walking. Well, he allowed me to be an expensive package walking. And uh, I'm very, very grateful for the kindness that he has shown to us and our family and very grateful for the gift of God on the inside of him. He is a great man of God. I remember one day we were actually in a uh, restaurant that no longer exists. Uh, as a matter of fact, no, we were in a Hardee's. And um, this lady had an epileptic uh, seizure. And, um, and her leg, I had never seen anything like this. Her leg began to curve and bow like as if, like, as if the bone was curving. And um, I remember my husband went over and he commanded, they were trying to find forks and spoons, you know, that were actually silver so that they could keep her from uh, chewing on and swallowing her tongue. And uh, he went over and he said, come out in the name of Jesus. And her whole body went limp. And it was miraculous to see how God sends us into various places at different times so that we can be his feet, his hands, his anointing, his gifting, his promise, his word. And we can be those things in flesh and present the gospel of Jesus Christ if it's nothing but come out in Jesus' name. And I know wherever that lady is, she'll never forget that the name of Jesus relieved her from the epileptic seizure. I also remember one time when my father was in service and there was a gentleman named Emmanuel. My father was a pastor at that time. And uh, Emmanuel used to have seizures all the time. Last name was Ellison. And um, my father prayed for him. I, I remember being about 11, 12 years old. I was a little girl. And I remember the power of God touching his body. His family declared that he never had another seizure. He was like, uh, let me see, he's about 14, 15 at that time. And he had been having seizures all his life. So I come to tell you today that Jesus is our healer. He's our redeemer. He's the one that makes us whole, amen? And I believe it from the, from the uh, index and the... Uh, I believe it from the index to the max. I believe all of it. Because his word is true. Amen? His word is true. So today, I am definitely on assignment. So glad that all of you have joined us. And I believe that there is a word from the Lord. If you would turn to Luke 17, the 11th chapter, We'll read the text, and then I'll pray, and we'll see what God will say. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Luke, the 17th chapter and the 11th verse, it begins with, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show thyselves, yourselves, unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face and his feet, at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Verse 17 says, And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? 
They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. It is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. I thank you, Father, that this time and this space, even this subject matter, and even these lepers within this scripture will show us the road to healing, will show us the way of recovering, that you would speak to our hearts on many, many levels, that you would bring healing to families, to bodies, to churches, to ministries, to leaders. I pray in Jesus' name. I give you praise and I give you glory. There is no one like you in all the earth. You know that I adore you. And I bless your holy name. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, the purpose of this message is threefold. I believe that within this message and including my assignment, my assignment today, the Lord has sent me to speak to those who are lost, who are sin sick. And he's also sent me to speak to those who have an affliction and it seems that there is no answer. He's also sent me to individuals who have suffered church hurt. Let the church say amen. 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 What I love about God is that he has written in his word all things that pertain both to life and godliness. And everything that we can think of or even desire to know from him, he's already provided an answer in his word. Everything else is a bonus. I say this about my family. I said, I'm grateful for the love. And I said, and everybody else's is a bonus. And so what it is with the word of God, it is so, it's one of those things that we must prioritize. And we know that if a word comes from an individual, a spoken word, a prophetic word, or someone comes with an illustration or an insight or a directive, we must be aware that the word of God sets all precedent. That heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word will stand. Amen? Amen. So let's go to chapter, uh, verse 11 again. And it says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Now, we are all well, well, well aware of the conflict that was between Samaria and Galilee. There was racial conflict as well as uh, a group of people who had thought themselves um, inferior based on the treatment that they received. And as a result, um, when Jesus decides to walk smack dab through the middle of everything that's going on, I love how he just walks through the middle of whatever's going on. And without addressing the situation, he addressed the situation. So he sees, he's walking through there, and this big city, Samaria, is a city uh, which in, Bab in the Bible time, was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. And during the times of Jesus, Samaria was located between Galilee to the north and Judea, or Judea to the south. Potato, potato, Judea. And so it's interesting that he chooses to walk right through it. We know that he will go out of his way to do his assignment. And it doesn't mean that this time it's actually going out of the way as far as when we look at a map, but it is that his steps are strategically ordered by the Lord. He's carrying out his assignment. His assignment is coming closely to an end. He's in the last portion of his ministry. And so how many of you know that as you get older, I know as I'm getting older, I'm living more strategic. Even when I get ready to take something up the steps, if I'm going, I'll wait a minute and I say, is there anything else that needs to go? Anything. <laughs> because I'm living strategically to accomplish more in less time and to be purposeful and intentional about everything. Amen. 
And so when I see Jesus going through the northern kingdom of Israel, going through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, it really piques my interest. And I think of him walking right through the middle of what was a tense uh, time because there were causes of prejudice in Samaria. Samaria, are, uh, they argued that they were the descendants of Joseph through his son Manasseh and Ephraim. They also believed the center of worship should remain at Shechem. So, and the mount, and the, on Mount Gizram, Giz, Gizram, where it had been in the time of Joshua, okay? So the Jews, however, built the first temple in Jerusalem. So that causes a uh, somewhat of a conflict. So you have, you have what you think is the capital, and then another has something that they think is the capital. And then the Samaritans produced their own version of the Pentateuch, the first five books, the five books of Moses. And then the Jews also, um, they, because of these things, they actually settled within their heart that they would have um, only select, they would treat Samaria as if they were never a part of them. It's like saying your cousin is not your cousin. And your cousin's children are not related to you. Uh, it's because there was a discord, a reason of discord between the two. We also know that after Assyrians conquered Samaria, they resettled that land with foreigners. So then we have another group of people coming in and now uh, mingling and co-mingling with what were Jews. And then we have a group of people being born through those relationships which caused further dissension. The, fer the, foreign, uh, the foreigners also brought their pagan gods. And so when I think about them bringing their pagan gods, then we have to explain why we believe how we believe, what happened when it happened. We have to go back all through the history of how God brought us through the Red Sea and all of this because the new people don't understand why we love and adore this God. And so it's kind of like when uh, one has a group of people who comes into a family who have been holy and told to live blameless before the Lord and that this, that, and the other we do not do and we worship one God, Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, that our Lord, as a family, we embrace him and we do not embrace any other God. There is to be no other God before him. And so, like others may have to explain, these Samaritans, because of the culture that was being built, every time when you have someone who is strategically following after God, you always have to make sure that you maintain the culture that you maintain the reason, the understanding of why we do what we do, amen? Amen. amen? And so because of all of these things, the Jews accused Samaria of idolatry and, uh, and that said that they had strayed away from Yahweh, which they had, and they considered them inferior. So we have the understanding as to why. There we go. In verse 12, it says, and he entered into a certain village. There met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. They stood at a distance by law. So when we go back to Leviticus, there were laws set up and put in place to address leprosy. And as a result, they were following the law. So they were standing afar off when Jesus saw them and they were a company of 10 men. So we need to know about these lepers that they're not just the individuals from Galilee. They're not just the individuals from Samaria. It's something about pain that causes people, even if they have disagreements, 
Even if they have a misunderstanding, pain will drive you together. Sometimes what it takes to survive through a crisis and through pain will drive people together. And that's what we see with this company of 10 men. They're all are lepers. They have had things happen to them and their body that they had no control over, and they have been disassociated from what they knew to be normal life. They had become offensive to society, and they were regarded as inferior. And so we find them there, and Jesus sees them in this state. Now, leprosy, it is a chronic infection disease caused by microbacterium affecting the skin and otherwise. You're familiar with it. You've, most of you have heard of it, right? And even though there was a, um, an antibiotic created in 1982, there are individuals who yet live uh, out a life as a leper. I went to India in 2014, and I preached at a leper, a leper colony. And uh, while there, I looked in the faces of babies who did not choose to be born that way. While there, I saw people who lost limbs. I saw individuals band-aided, bandaged. I saw broken people. And I was so honored that God would allow me to minister to this group of people. It touched my heart that my friend um, Sherry Harris and Jack Harris, who um, are the founders of Global Messenger Ministries, that they would go there and that they would allow me to go with them. And I, was, I am in their debt for how God changed my life. I always thought I had compassion for people, but when you look in the face of a two-year-old who is totally uh, just beautiful and you know that because of association that she will encounter things that your children would ever know. When you see children take uh, two-liter bottles and dip it in what looks like a trench to get water, this little girl, she couldn't have been any older than 10 and she has like a six or four year old, two of them following her. She's the mother now because there are no more parents. And she's dipping a dirty, I'm talking about filthy on the inside, two liter bottle into water so that she could give them water, which was probably malaria diseased infested. And we come to this nation that my father fought for. And we have people who don't know the gift of God that he's given us in this nation. The price that has been paid. So while I was in this leprosy colony, I was ministering to these individuals. And then we went to a boy's and a girl's home. Some of them are... Um, some of them are orphans from individuals who passed away who had not contracted uh, leprosy. And uh, we ministered there as well. And looking in their eyes and telling them that there is a hope and a future. And also in the leprosy colony, telling them that there is a hope and a future in and through Christ Jesus. He is our hope. He is our future. And bringing them this great gospel that heals the sick and raises the dead. That's our gospel. And seeing God do miracles, signs, and wonders, even as we were in India. Very grateful for what he did. Never shall forget the faces I've seen. And when I read about the individuals uh, in this scripture, it gives me a whole other insight of what leprosy does to make one an outcast and to restrict one from having access to others. 
Now, it's said that uh, leprosy can last from 10 to 30 years, and um, it is one of those things that the longer one has it, uh, that there's numbness in various parts in their bodies, and as a result, they end up wounding themselves, and then those wounds become infected and et cetera. And, uh, and so when I thought about that, I thought about how in the body of Christ, when there are various things that occur that may not be the norm or may not be acceptable or may not be uh, the status quo, that often people may feel rejected and may feel as if they are an outcast or may feel as if what they have contributed towards the gospel and the good news and those who would come to the Lord, they feel as if it does not matter. I've come to tell you that it does matter. Every word, every sacrifice, every gift sown, everything that you do to reach the lost, every act of kindness, every time that you show people the love of Jesus instead of showing them the flesh, it counts for the kingdom of God. Now, Bible examples of leprosy are uh, Moses. During the time that Moses was on the backside of the desert, and he sees the burning bush. And the burning bush, uh, after he spent that time with the Lord, and it's uh, seven days in, and he's like, Lord, they will not believe that you sent me. They will not believe that you have said what you said through me. And so the Lord tells him to put his hand within his bosom. Put it near your heart. Put your hand in near your heart and then pull it out again. And his hand was leprous, white as snow, so the scripture says. Then he puts it back in. He said, put it back in, and then it comes out and it's restored. This was one of the signs and wonders that he was to show in Egypt to show that God had sent him. In the scriptures, we also see where Miriam became leprous because she spoke against Moses for marrying a Cushite. And even though they asked Moses to pray for her, and, he, and she received healing immediately, because that she was leprous, she had to stay out seven days. And it was to feel, fulfill the law. And then we have a general named Naaman, who was stricken, and Elijah sends, the, Elijah sends the word and says, go and dip seven times. So we have time after time after time where we see God brings restoration and he wants to bring healing to that which seems insurmountable. He wants to bring deliverance to that which seems irreparable. Amen? Amen. Verse 13 said, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, when I think of that general and even these lepers, their cry is for mercy. They're asking for something that they do not deserve, something that has not uh, come into existence at this, time, at this time. 1982 has not come along where there is an antibiotic for it or a healing serum for it. There is nothing to cure it. And they're asking for something that, they, uh, that man would say they do not rightfully deserve. But Jesus, he crosses across the threshold of time and he brings healing into their atmosphere. There had already been major healings in Galilee and Judea, and Jesus now decides that he will bring healing to these lepers. When I think of these lepers, and I think of them crying for mercy, for them to lift their voice, quite often the larynx is affected by Leprosy. And there may be a hoarse sound where they're not able to extend their voices. 
and they lift their voice. So in faith, they're lifting their voice for something that has not been seen for them. I love that even in this, I see that for individuals who were around Galilee, they understood that he was a healer. So the term master really speaks of one that knows of his reputation or one that is aware of what he has done or will do. And so they call out master and they call upon his name in faith. And it is this faith that causes Jesus to respond. He responds to your faith. Regardless as to what's going on and what it looks like and how long it's been going on, Jesus will respond to your faith. So I love that as they called him master, they were recognizing his authority and they were also recognizing that he had the power to do what they asked him to do. When they called upon the name of Jesus and they asked him as master and savior, they actually were neglecting what could have been what we know now as church hurt. They may have gone to one of his crusades before and nothing happened. They may have been in the midst of individuals who even laid hands up on them or said that the master is in town. At that time, no one was going around saying, I'm healing in the name of Jesus. Very few. Unless we're talking about their, the disciples. And so individuals, when they came, they had an opportunity to be offended. Why? Because they were not healed the last time. They didn't say, well, I won't call upon the name of Jesus because I was in the crowd last time and I did not receive healing. But their faith propelled them into a place where they believed for that which they had not obtained before. And as a result, Jesus, he spoke to them, verse 14. And he saw them and he said to them, Go and show thyselves to the priest. Now, the priest, if they are part of the temple, they're part of also the society that has cast them out. They're also part of the society uh, who, when they look upon the sin of God, they see something that resembles hurt. Why? Because they can assemble, they can worship, they all have a community of support. However, based on what has happened to me in life, I am isolated. I believe that there are many people who God has called in this hour because they have a church hurt or they have an offense that they find themselves in a place where they seem alone and where they really struggle to see, will I ever go back to the church again? Will I return to the priest? Because to go to the priest, they had to go through a whole eight days of review to certify them as cleansed from leprosy. So how many of them who thought that they saw some change in their body had gone there before and said, I am made whole? And they went through the eight-day series of checks and balances to find that they had not received yet. How many of them went around with a downcast spirit saying, I see what has happened for the who's who? But it seems like it has not happened for me. My bills have not been paid. My body has not been healed. My children are gone wayward. It gives opportunity for offense. Anybody ever been offended in the house of God? I thought I, I, thought I knew some of y'all. <laughs> we have served in the house of God, my husband and I, since we were teenagers. And we have served not only as teenagers, but as adults. And it's been interesting. When I was uh, 22 years old, 
and this was before my children were born. And a prophet came to me and he said, God said he's sending you to predominantly Caucasian ministries. He said, because you do not know the difference. I was not raised in a home that referred to people by their color. My father, though, he served in the Navy and came home in, I'm not going to tell y'all my age. <laughs> Just do the math. Anybody married 34 years? Come on, baby. <laughs> so my father came home in 67, 66 or 67. And when he came home, I was three months old. And he had been on the ship. He said he was crying because he had not been able to see his child. And he came home from an unpopular war. But he determined in his heart that he would not pass offense to his children. He taught us that we could do anything, be anybody, accomplish anything. That with God on our side, and if we would allow him to lead and guide us. And they taught us to love all people. So it was a strange thing when I went to college and I ran into life. <laughs> and then when we began serving in ministry, and because we were the first at many places, there's things that I've heard that I'm taking to the grave. <laughs> it don't bless anybody, including me. And so what you have to do, and I know that there's been others, missionaries who have gone to other cultures, and they've heard things. I know because they're my friends. And they've come to my culture and they've heard things. We are the body of Christ. If one go down, we all go down. When the world comes for us, they don't say we're just going after the Baptists, the Pentecostals, the Charismatics, none of them. If they come after one, trust me, after they conquer them, after they first bind the strong man, they're coming for the others. Amen? But what I love about um, my father is that, and my mother, is that they instilled in us the love for people. So when you have, there is a range of love, there is a gift of love that God gives you for all people. So while people are chopping away at it, you still have way more than most people have even while people are doing whatever they're doing. And so what I love about God is that he equipped, it, he equipped us to do what we do and to go where we go and has given us resilience and has authorized us not to take offense. Now, think about it as a fence. If you're actually carrying, I'm talking about a real fence, okay? If you're dragging a fence from here to here, to here, to here, automatically when people meet you, there is a feel that they get because you're offended. I want to say to you today, if you've been offended, offended in the house of the Lord, say if the pastor didn't do what you thought he would do, if the leadership did, wasn't able to perform what they thought they would perform, if some parishioner or congregant came along and they said something that was very damaging to you, I am very sorry that it happened. I wish it never happened to you, but allow the God of the ages to wipe your heart clean. He is the God who makes all things new. And even if you are a leader today and you have quit the ministry, why? Because someone said something so hurtful, so binding, so dismissive that you thought that you were not of value. God values you. Amen. He put a treasure inside of you that no one else in the world has. No one has the treasure that he's placed in your heart. The combination of who you are, your parents, your environment, everything that you've been through, your life experiences, make you an individual who is unique and it's like a guitar. Anyone can get up and play the same song, but every guitar has a different sound simply because of the wood it was carved out of. Yeah. 
You've been carved from a unique type of wood. Your experiences, the things that you've gone through in life causes your voice to have a different sound. Just like these lepers had a hoarse sound based on what they had been through, there's a different sound inside of you. And the world is waiting to hear you. The world is waiting to hear from the treasure on the inside of you. And if anyone understands about anything about strategy, if one is trying to um, disassemble anything that's great or grand or wonderful, this is what they do. They take piece by piece and they take it out little by little. My question is, what is happening because that piece is not there? What is happening because that piece went home and someone offended them so bad? I know it was bad. You say, you see, I understand, right? right? But forgive them. Say, I forgive you. Say, I forgive you. <laughs> Whether they're dead, alive, on the other side of the world, I forgive you. See, because there is a treasure on the inside of you, and the way that that alabaster box opens is through the grace of God and forgiveness. Someone forgave us by his grace, so we're going to forgive others, extend the same grace, so that this leprosy of unforgiveness, this leprosy of offense, this leprosy of hurt that makes our heart numb, and chips away little by little at everything that is trustworthy, wonderful, and the gift of God. We're going to allow God to heal us. Someone in this place, lift your hand and say, I receive healing from church hurt. I forgive everybody. Everybody. I release them in the name of Jesus. And I receive healing balm in my soul, my spirit, my heart. Amen. Now, according to the law, in Leviticus chapter 13 and 14, the priests were the inspectors, as I said. And this series of testing and checks and balances that they did for eight days. You could go through that for eight days, and then they say, well, we're going to have to do that an another eight days. So when Jesus told them to go to the priest, they were going to their place of pain, but they're also entering back into community. I don't know how long they had been out of community. It's something about when people are out of community, they lose some social skills. Anybody can I get a witness anywhere? I'm like, you did that in public. And so that is, that is a loss of social skills. Well, when they go, it's all this anxiety. Why? Because they're walking into the unknown. There are times after God brings redemption in areas of your life that you'll have to walk out the unknown. There'll be times when you're like, I'm not familiar with this. I'm not sure exactly how this is going to end, but I'm going to do what I need to do to get where I need to get. Why? Because I trust God. Amen? So they go there, and but one returns, and one goes back. They're following the word of the Lord to go to show themselves to the priest, and they received healing as they went. Sometimes it's not even about, like with Naaman, he almost let pride deprive him of healing. It's amazing what pride does. I, it's amazing. I'll just leave it there. It's amazing what pride does. No one is so great and so grand that they can't do what the master says to receive healing. But this is what happens. While they're walking along, it's not because they necessarily were someone who had seen others be healed. All of them may not have seen, but they all received healing. And it is in that moment of healing that it comes to one who happens to be a Samaritan. 
This Samaritan turns back and says, thank you. He bows at Jesus' feet. He prostrates himself. And he begins to thank God for doing what no one else could do. Now, Jesus said, wasn't there? Now, the God of the ages who number the stars know all the numbers of hairs in your head. He says, now, wasn't there? Come on. There we go. <laughs> He's like, I'm just doing a little bit of math here. But couldn't they take the moment? to come back and say thank you for that which was given that you could not find anywhere else. And so then Jesus, it's wonderful what he does. When Jesus listens to this individual after he made the comment about the other nine, what he does Something about the faith of this man who has returned to say thank you. You know, it, it really spoke to me when he said, Thy faith has made thee whole. Now, the others received a healing, but he made him whole. Whole speaks of salvation. He received something that the others did not receive. When he decided to go back to the high priest, not just the priests in the synagogue, but he went back to the king of kings and the lord of lords. He went back to the high priest. And he prostrated himself and he said, I thank you. He gave worship. He gave praise and adoration. I would like to say that even in that moment, he recognized him as more than just a healer. Oh, a healer is wonderful. But he stepped out of what could happen just to one's body that is temporal. These bodies, I don't care how you prop them, paint them, shape them. They're going to leave here. <laughs> he stepped out of what could be done to a body, and he entered into what is given eternally. He entered into an eternal salvation that not only secured today, but it prepares a body for him. That he goes to prepare a place for him. Based on, thank you. Somebody in this place say thank you. Thank you, thank you Lord. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. I don't know what all he told God thank you for, but I don't know if he began from way back and said, thank you, God, for everything that's been left on my body that could have been deteriorated and gone. Thank you, God, for bringing me to this road. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you for giving me a company of friends, but thank you for allowing me now to enter back into society. Give him praise in this place. I love what was done by Christ Jesus when he gave him not only healing in his body, but eternal life. What a gift for thank you. I'm thinking about, even in this hour, how many people have not taken the opportunity to go back and tell even the churches that raised them. I'm not saying they had it all right. How many people have not taken the opportunity to go tell the churches who may, you, you may now go to somewhere that, you know, everyone thinks is wonderful and it is wonderful and grand, but do you remember the people who took time when you were 10 years old? Who took you to baseball games? Who taught you to crochet? You know, you, you know these kids, honey, these babies don't know nothing about this. But the, the church mothers taught us how to crochet. They taught us how to knit. You know, back then they, took, they, they sent you to home ec school. You went to home ec. But the church mothers, while you were in what they called the sewing circle. That's what it's called. It's called the sewing circle. And when you would go, 
you would receive a wealth of knowledge from aged women who loved you enough to share with you that if you put onion underwater, that you won't cry as much. Or if you, <laughs> there's just some tricks that they tell you. Yeah, if you put baking soda, I'm not gonna even go through my list. Honey, the things I've heard around the sewing circle. And I went back and I told these people, thank you. Why? Because the things that I have faced in life, I never would have made it if those church mothers, if my mother, my aunties, my father, the women of the Lord, if they had not taught me what to do, how to do, and when to do, how to love people, what is and isn't appropriate. And so we've never been anywhere that we can't go back. In over 30 years of ministry, as we worked for ministries, we can go back anywhere we've been before. Why? Because they taught us to honor, to love, to respect. And it's an honor to go back and say, thank you. Amen? So what he received in this hour was something that was more tangible than what his flesh had received. And he knew that it was the greater gift. It was the greater gift from the master. In this hour, there are individuals who feel as if they've come to impasses in their body, in their finances, in their family, in their careers. And Jesus, who makes all things new, Jesus, who says, go and be whole, is speaking again to you and saying, in every area of your life, be whole. Be whole in your marriage. Be whole in your church. Be whole in your career, behold in your family, behold in your community and your nation, behold. And so today we give to him what only he can do. We give to him the very thing that only the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who walks through uncomfortable situations, and makes a monumental moment and heals that which has not been healed before. I love how they said specific, specifically that the Samaritan came back. He's the one that one would have thought wouldn't have known to do the greater thing. It's amazing to me how God plants Samaritans among us and often they are the ones who show us what God is calling for in this hour. The walk of love, the walk of kindness, the walk of forgiveness, the walk of temperance. And in this hour, I believe that God has put a thank you in your spirit that not only causes you to rise to a point where now you want to release those who have transgressed against you, but you want to live the life of a forgiver. I choose to forgive. You know, when you forgive on the reflex, when it's your rebound to go back and say thank you, when it's your reflex, it's part of who you are. It can be part of who you are. When people cut me off in the street, I don't do what I see the saints doing. I just, I mean, I act as if almost it didn't happen, literally. I don't say anything inwardly or outwardly. Because if I practice that when people do greater things, you have no response. If you learn not to feed the offense, if you learn not to revisit the offense, it is a choice to turn off that record player that keeps playing it over and over again, to change bandwidths of the, the signal that's coming through that reminds you of it. Or when you run into something that reminds you of it, you've got to decree and declare 
that because of the call of God on your life, because I've decided to be a lifetime forgiver, that now I step into greater, greater. He gave that man greater because he was thankful and he had gratitude and he expressed it to the king of kings. Who is in your life at this point that God wants you to remember that I not only is going to bring healing to something that happened so long ago, but it's also going to give you something eternal. What's eternal? Hope is eternal. Joy is eternal. Peace is eternal. Strength is eternal. And you go from glory to glory to glory. And it comes to a place where the things that rock others, you'll stand strong and steadfast as a tree planted by the rivers of water. You'll bend, but you won't break. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And day after day after day, you'll grow stronger. Now, you know, a fence has a root that's really, it's, it's compared to the sycamine tree, and they say that that root grows so deep and lives so long, so are fences. But we've killed the fence today, right? We let it go. We forgave everybody. And now you're getting ready to walk into what seems like a brand new day. When they went and they were examined for eight days, eight represents new beginnings. I feel new beginnings in this place. Woo! I feel new beginnings in this place. Not only does the offense cause one to hold a bitterness, but it also leaves you within the parameters and the scope of what they said you were. When you forgive them, you unlock yourself. You took a key and you unlock the door. Just walk on out. Walk into your brand new day. There's greatness on the inside of you. If you have survived all that we've been through in the last two years. You've got to know that God left you here for a reason. You're not something haphazard. It's not just some, some, some whim. But I decree and I declare, oh my God, that the King of glory has made a treasure and a deposit on the inside of you and he's requiring it of you. Great leader who's gone home, Great priest and great king who's gone home, those who finance the gospel, those who preach the gospel, because you've been wounded, you've gone home. You can go back. Go back to the last place that you felt God. It might not be the biggest and it might not be the most excellent, but where did you feel God? Where did he minister to you? Where did he put a deposit in you that takes you through the storms of life? Go back home. They're waiting on you. And there is a place that you are to fulfill that God has need of you in this hour. We're stepping into the threshold of the greatest harvest we've ever seen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're in it. Oh, yeah. We're in it. And people are going to come to Christ Jesus by the droves. It don't matter where they've been, what they've done. It's like they're going to shake themselves like Samson and they're going to rise up and do great things for Jesus. And God needs you. Can you imagine if some of these individuals who are even coming off the streets that God is going to bring into the fold that have never heard the name of Christ Jesus? I'm talking about here in the States. I, when I said heard the name of Christ Jesus, when you hear him in your heart, and you, when you know the difference that he's not just any other God, he is the God of ages. That kind of hear the name of Jesus. They're going to come into our churches. And I, what the picture that the Lord gave me about 15 years ago, he said, unless his people mature and rise up and take their place, he said, we'll have children sitting in the laps of children. It's time for all of us to grow up. 
and to do the work that our great Father has sent us to do. I decree and I declare that this is on the inside of you, that you are ready. He has prepared you. Some people are waiting for X, Y, and Z. Honey, whatever you've gone through has been your boot camp. Trust me, you're ready. And there's a world waiting to hear the word of the Lord on the inside of you. Amen? So today, I commission and I charge you. If you know someone, you're here in the house of the Lord. If you know someone who's been displaced, I know people who have been displaced for 20 years from the house of the Lord over an offense. I know them. If you know someone, ask God to give you wisdom to speak into their lives and to bring them back to the fold. Take them back into community. Take them back into what is now their rightful place as God heals their heart. Minister to them. It's like if you work for a company and someone does something cruel to you in a company, it's not, it's not the company, it's the person. People hurt people. If you believe this, that there are people who have been hurt in church and they think that God hurt them. God is not mad at you. He did not want that to happen to you. He's, he is grieved by the hurt that was inflicted upon you, but he loves you and he wants you to come back. Say, come back to Jesus. Come back to church. Take your rightful place. Now I would like to pray for those who believe that there is no answer, there's no cure. I still believe, I still believe that the God who is Jehovah Rapha, that he is our healer. And not only will he heal us, but he will reconcile those things that have been damaged in your heart and your life. So even now, Father, I thank you for my brother, my sisters, those who are standing in need of healing, those who have been damaged and need the hand of the Lord to repair what doctors cannot repair and what doctors can repair. I thank you, Father, for by your mighty power, laying your hands upon them, even now, wherever they are, all across the globe, bringing healing, deliverance, and salvation. I bind sickness and disease, and I command the healing power of Jesus Christ be manifested in your body. I bind every lie, everything that ever said it would not happen, that the healing power of Jesus Christ comes forth in your body even now, and that you step into a place of gratitude that causes you to see the eternal God and to receive an eternal deposit from the one and only Christ Jesus, from the King of glory, the mighty one. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And if there is anyone who would like to receive Christ Jesus even now? All across the world, raising your hand. That you need a living Savior. That you need Him to heal and make you whole. Please repeat after me. Father, Forgive me for all of my sin. I receive Christ Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Teach me how to follow after you. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins and dying on Calvary's cross for me. I'm eternally grateful. Now in this room, thank you, Jesus. Come on and give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Do what the leper did. Just bless him for what he's done in your heart today. Oh, we give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name. Bless your holy name, Jesus. Everlasting one, King of kings and Lord of lords. You're the great I am, and we bless you, Lord. Oh, great Redeemer. We worship, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for healing my heart. Thank you for giving me a brand new start, Jesus. Oh, we bless you today. Hallelujah. Give you praise, give you praise. Wonderful praise. The Lord is healing someone's heart even now. I saw two, uh, I saw two, I don't know if they're valves or veins, but I saw the hand of the Lord healing a physical heart even now. Again and again in this message, I've spoken to a leader. There is a leader. And as a matter of fact, you were a general. And you went home. You said, I finished. I've done what I was supposed to do. I've done books. I've done recordings. And God is calling for you at this hour to take your rightful post, sir. In this hour. I'm sorry for what happened to you. but we have need of you. The King of Kings has need of you, has need of you, has need of you. Your day is not done, and your assignment extends your life. It gives your body a reason to live. So even as you're turning in this hour, I see a, uh, a brown bookcase where you've even started giving away your books and you started doing it because you thought that there was no more need for you to research those things anymore. I know we have internet, but you gave it away for another reason. God has need of you. We need you. Oh, the King of Kings has need of you and when God heals you when you take your place I see like a domino effect it's going to be a domino of people who are going to line into the call into the grace into the greatness into the hope into the destiny that he's designed for them. Why? Because a general took his place again. So everyone in this place that has laid down their gift, their talent, their skill, and they've hidden it or laid it up on a shelf, go get it again. Take it out and sharpen it. We're in warfare. We're in warfare. And in this hour, the king has need of you. He has need of you. Man of God. Last thing, touch your heart. And we're going to seal this word over it. It's one thing to open the door. It's another thing to seal the door that you came out of. We're going to seal this door. We seal it in the name of Jesus. Our heart is not a door anymore for offense, bitterness, 
or any of those things that drives us from the presence of the Lord and his people. And we seal it in Jesus' name, and we open our door for the brand new day. Amen? Come on and give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Tracy. I hear this song. I am healed by the wound in his side. I am healed by the wound in his side. Yes, I'm healed by the wound in my side. My Savior side, I am healed by the wound in His side. Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah, yeah, hallelujah, 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 glory to Jesus. If you have a prayer language, let's just go before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, God. We say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we're going to have our prayer ministers to come forward. Were you not blessed? Were you not blessed this afternoon? Were you not blessed? We are not offended. That door has been sealed. As I was sitting down there, as my sister was bringing the word, the Lord had brought back something to me. Years ago when I was a teenager, I was walking with some of my friends, and I grew up in the state of New Jersey, and as I was walking, there was these guys that were coming towards us. And one of my friends said, don't stop, Tracy. I said, I don't plan to stop. And I kept on walking, and he kept blocking my way, and he wouldn't let me go by. And he pulled out a gun, and he held it up to my head, and I screamed for my girlfriends, and they came running back because we were about to do warfare, the physical kind. And I know he probably was thinking, these crazy girls, they're going to fight us? And we didn't know the gun was real or not. We don't know anything about guns. And he had the gun and he told them, if you touch me, I will shoot her. And he held a gun right to my head. And I was thinking, she was talking about forgiveness. I was like, God, I don't know where that young man is right now. But I thank you that I'm here today. Because I didn't have to be. It could have, he could, he put, I don't even know if he pulled the, tr it, nothing went off. But I'm here. I just, I just, I just hope that somebody, somewhere, that that young man is not still doing that kind of thing. And yes, I forgive him. I was in a, I'm just looking at 
his life. But God, I'm here today to praise him. So there could be things that have happened in your life. I don't know what caused that young man to do that to me that day. What he was trying to do is rob me of a necklace that wasn't even real gold. But something took place in his life that he did not know Jesus for him to try and do that to me. There may be somebody, even if you stand in the gap for them and you come forward, at this time, if you need prayer for anything, I encourage you to come forward. Our brother Jurgen is here and Sister Isabella over there. And if you come forward, they'll get you to a prayer minister. We are here to agree with you in prayer for whatever you may stand in need of. Is there anybody, even if you know of someone that's not here today, but you want to stand in the gap for them? Do you know that there is power in agreement? There is power in agreement. So let us just look to the Lord, and we encourage you to come right now. Thank you, Jesus. And I know some of you, some, even if you're watching online, I just hear somebody saying, well, you don't know what I did, Tracy. You don't know. I just read you a testimony of a gentleman who was in prison, and he's born again now. There is nothing that could take place in your life that you have done that God has not already forgiven you for. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're not in a rush or anything. So if you, like I said, that you come forward, thank you, Lord God. Thank you. We are so glad that you joined us here this afternoon. We encourage you to come back next week. We're so glad to be back having Healing School Live. So we encourage you, if you're visiting from out of state, watch us online. We are here most Thursdays at 1 o'clock Colorado time. But I thank you so much for joining us today. And next week we're going to have, our speaker is going to be Pastor Jeremy Pearsons from Legacy Church here in Green Mountain Falls. So we encourage you to come and share with us. And Daniel, he will be back here with the Karis worship team. But let us just think on Jesus and all that he has done. And just remember to say thank you. Thank you for everything that he has done in your life. We are so glad that you're tuning in with us today. We look forward to seeing you again next week. We love you and God bless you. Thank you.